Commander Masters has taught me an extremely valuable lesson. As an ingrained enthusiast who's been around the game for the better part of almost 20 years, it's been hard for me to embrace the idea that not every set is for me. And with this being the topic of conversation in the community at this moment, I thought it was important to have a conversation about the idea that magic isn't for everybody and what that actually means and compare that with some recent statements that Wizards of the Coast themselves have made. Now, this is going to be a tough conversation for some of us, myself included. So I hope you stick around for the entire thing and I hope you have some wonderful thoughts to share in the comments section because this is a community conversation we're going to be having for some time now. All right, let's get into it. As a trading card game enthusiast, I've always found it difficult to be someone who's one foot in and one foot out. I've been more of a slap on my speedo, walk to the end of the diving board, and go in head first, so to speak. And that's why when Commander Masters was announced, I had a pit in the center of my stomach. Now, I'm going to take a second and be vulnerable with each and every one of you out there. I decided to skip this set, and when I decided to skip this set, I had not really FOMO, but a lot of internal guilt. I am aggressively trying to grow a YouTube channel, continue to build a community, and have wonderful and exciting conversations with each and every one of you out there when it comes to my favorite trading card game. And the idea of not purchasing a set made me feel like, am I really a magic YouTuber? What makes me different than other people that just say, this isn't for me and magic isn't for me and blah, blah, blah. And that really turned me on to this community conversation that has come to a head right now of the idea of this set, that set, or Magic the Gathering as a whole just isn't for you. So today, I want to talk about that. And before we get into it, I want everyone to take a second and look around this channel. Look in this video's description. There is no hashtag MTG ambassador. There is no Wizards of the Coast representation. And I guarantee you, my car would be so much nicer than it is if Watsy was giving me some under the table kickback to share my feelings about magic. So this is just how me, a regular consumer who's been around magic at this point in his life for more than he hasn't, which is terrifying to say into a microphone, feels about the ecosystem, about things that are going on. And what I want to do today is have a more rational and calm conversation. If you go to the comment section and just scream, magic is evil, wizards of the coast is greedy, everything is ruined. I'm, I'm not interested in that today. I want to have a more involved conversation. Why is this going on? What is happening? And what can people like you and I do to actively continue to enjoy or not enjoy Magic the Gathering. Well, the idea that magic isn't for you or is not for everyone of this set or that set or whatever verbiage you want to use when it comes to that popular phrase these days really circles around two main ideas. And the first one is something that we are all realizing every single day. And that's the price of Magic the Gathering. Well, the price of Magic the Gathering went up recently in the last year and a half when Wizards of the Coast announced the magic price increase. And this was something we were all very concerned about. And I want to state that this is going to happen a lot through this conversation, but let's just be rational human beings here for a second. If we expected a Magic the Gathering box to cost the same now as it did when we all got involved in the hobby, however long ago that was, well, we're just not being real realistic. To expect MTG to be the only product that avoided inflation, a wider range of products, the shorter attention span of people, that's just something that is an unrealistic way to view magic. So the price increase was always going to happen. The problem with the price increase is who was left holding the bag. Without something like MSRP and Magic being a very open market, we get things that are often wonderful for consumers. If a set is less popular, it's more readily available. If it's more popular, your game store has the opportunity to make more money on it. That's a very open and free market, and most of the time, it yields fairly positive results. But here, we are in a situation where Magic increased their prices, distribution increased their prices, your game store still has to buy the product, and well, the consumers, we have decided often on several sets that we're not willing to pay that with how readily available the set is, and the next set coming right around the corner, that's right, the rapid release cycle is part of this, it's something that we're not going to engage with, we're going to wait for the next thing, and because of that, the place that we all know and love is left holding the bag, and that means the champions for Magic the Gathering, the hub where you'd always go for some magic positivity, some fun, some entertainment, is 
well, often poisoned by the well that it is forced to draw from. And I actually attest that this would have been fine. We could have had all these sets with the price increase without this pivotal factor. This idea of ultra premium products with no affordable entry point being sprinkled on top. Commander Masters would be the latest example of this in my opinion. Now, yes, Magic will always have premium products, but I don't entertain the idea of someone complaining about a $250 collector box when there's a $110 set box on the shelf right next to it. I think that the set box then would be your way to enjoy Magic the Gathering. The idea that people with more financial means than you and I get to enjoy a different product, it's not something that bothers me. The cards aren't functionally unique, they're different treatments, there might be changes in collectability, but I still get to play Magic the Gathering and enjoy it as I see fit, so the people with more money buying more expensive products don't bother me. But when it comes to a set like Commander Masters, I do get a little bit peeved. With the point of entry being so high and the idea that I'm getting so many products so frequently, my game store can't make any money and there's nothing affordable to buy. Well, it feels like all of Magic the Gathering is changing. And that's a theme here as to why we think Magic might not be for us anymore. So hold on to this idea of change that now because of the price and the availability of products is constantly being thrown in our face and you couple that with again this rapid release cycle that we just mentioned. Magic the Gathering used to be something that ingrained enthusiasts like you and I would open a set, go to our local game store and spend a good amount of time just being in love with the product. We'd get into the meat and potatoes of a set and try new strategies and experience almost every single card that a set has to offer. Well, this rapid release cycle really pushes back against that. But I wanna take a moment here and say, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're on the internet and you're watching this YouTube channel, you, like me, are a more ingrained and involved enthusiast than most of the community. Therefore, you don't really like the rapid release cycle. There's not a lot going on for you and it might hit you the wrong way. However, we must accept that the largest portion of our community, most enthusiasts, more than you and I and Rudy's viewers and Tolarian Community College viewers and all of them combined, engage with Magic in a much different way. They probably go down to the game store once or twice a month, play around the kitchen table with their friends and get excited when they see that the next product is coming out because, well, they don't spend a ton on every single release. They get something new in their hands, they try something new, then they move on to the next thing. This is exemplified by the fact that we see commander enthusiasts completely changing how they engage with the format. I've said it on this channel ad nauseum, I'll link a commander video somewhere around here, but commander players no longer build five highly powerful decks. They build 42 decks of varying strategies representing cards from all these different releases and that's how they choose to enjoy the game. They don't build high power or expensive complex mana bases or anymore. You and I might, but most enthusiasts don't. So the rapid release cycle does benefit a large portion of our community, but it does come at a cost. This rapid release cycle means design is harder. We see more and more reprints, meaning the value of our cards vastly changes. What we're going to see out of each set changes, and when something cool comes along, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, uh, Leyline Binding, Ledger Shredder, things like this come along, we don't get enough time to fall in love with them, and then we kind of push them to the side and focus on the reprints as a way to say there's nothing new and nothing original going on. So this rapid release cycle's got pluses, it's got minuses, but it is what it is, and it is the way magic is going to work right now. And this all culminates in the idea that all these frustrations boil and build to a head, and it's very easy to say, the magic I know is dead, and Wizards of the Coast killed it, and it's all over. Well, I frankly think this is a lazy conversation to have. I know that I don't like the state of some things when it comes to Magic the Gathering. I've been very vocal about them on this channel, and I know magic is changing beyond what I have always loved and have always enjoyed. But that doesn't mean the game I know it is gone. That means the game I know it is changing and always will. If I'm lucky enough to be on this YouTube channel talking to you four, five, six years from now, guess what? The game that we love will have changed again. And I personally believe, and this is my personal belief, I'm not projecting this on any one of you out there, that it's my job to choose how to interact with Magic the Gathering, to see how I can best 
find enjoyment in all the products, all the sets, and everything going on in the community. And that's that's my job. And that's something I hope to impart on everyone who watches this channel, everyone who subscribes, everyone who just follows the hometown TCG journey. I hope that you all know that there are ways to find enjoyment with Magic the Gathering. And there are some things that we can do for fun. And we have to accept that the game has changed and will continue to change. But the core, what we fell in love with is still there. We just have to choose to look for it, choose to embrace it, and choose to open our minds to some of the new ways Magic is going to engage with various communities. Now, I already know some people in this comment section, if you made it this long, you're just going to shout at me for being a wizard shill. And I am not a wizard shill. I am, however, a hometown TCG shill. There's channel freaking memberships. That's right, exclusive channel content and emotes and fun stuff, channel badges. Consider checking out the channel memberships. It is how I am trying to build the new channel setup. At 20 channel members, we'll do something special for channel members. It's going to be a lot of fun. I encourage each and every one of you to check it out. There's a link in this video's description. Uh, you can't do it on mobile, or I guess, or on iPhone. It's really uncomfortable to do mobile. So if you're on your desktop or next time at your computer, head to hometown TCG, check one of those videos out, click that join button and at least explore everything channel members has to offer for you but again there's no wizards of the coast affiliation here i'm not an mtg ambassador i just would like to have a deeper conversation than everything is just awful all the time i hope you guys have enjoyed this i hope we've gotten a little bit out of it i hope you've shared with me your thoughts in the comment section below and if you could share this video on social media because this video is not going to track very well it's not modern magic news so i would enjoy you guys you know share this with any community that you think might find this interesting until next time you guys know me my name is josh i hope you've had fun today and we will see you around for the next one goodbye